Gato Serizal was many things. A doctor, a sculptor, a polyglot, but most of all, we know him best as a writer. Of all the things Rizal has written, from novels, newspaper articles, poems, and more, none hit quite as hard as the national hero's very last words. For today's video, we'll be taking a look at Rizal's life and the lasting legacy he left behind. Before Jose Rizal became a martyr and a beloved national hero, he was simply Pepe, the beloved son of wealthy hacienderos in Calamba, Laguna. Born in 1861, his parents knew Rizal was something special even when he was just a baby. This amazing intellect continued well into his adult life. Rizal was academically gifted, completing several degrees from various universities around the world, including land surveying, medicine, and ophthalmology. Rizal was also famously a polyglot. He knew at least 22 languages, including Tagalog, Spanish, French, English, German, and more. But even with his immense contributions in fields such as medicine, linguistics, and history, what remains his greatest gift to the Philippines is his writing. Rizal was a gifted writer. Even at a young age, he wrote an annotated edition of Antonio de Morga's Successos de las Islas Filipinas, where he debunked stereotypical statements of Filipinos and worked to recover a lost history. If you're a high school student or were a high school student, you probably remember studying about Nolimitangere and El Filibusterismo. That is, if you listened in your Filipina classes, both books were monumental since they both criticized the Spanish colonial regime. These books were only the beginning of what was to come not just for Rizal, but for the entire Filipino nation. Eyes were opened towards injustices, revolts became more intense, but Spanish colonization tightened its hold in the Philippines. While these were happening in the Philippines in the late 19th century, Spain was already in a lot of crisis. The empire was already losing its colonies, and its last stronghold was the Philippines. So you can imagine how much they fought to retain its hold on its last colony. Revolts were suppressed, criticism was suppressed, and abuses towards Filipinos prevailed. The more these happened, the more Filipinos fought back by asking for social and political reforms. Eventually, many Filipinos believed that reform wasn't enough anymore, so the Katipunan was formed, led by Rizal's good friend Andres Bonifacio, which resorted to armed revolution for total independence from Spain. By then, Rizal had already been in exile because of his involvement in advocating for reforms in the La Liga Filipina. After being granted leave by Governor General Ramon Blanco to administer patients with yellow fever in Cuba, he was arrested on the way and imprisoned in Barcelona, and he would later be transferred to Manila. Because of his associations with the members of the Katipunan, he was tried for sedition and rebellion and was found guilty on all charges thus sentencing him to death. If you have ever been to Fort Santiago, you would know exactly where Rizal was imprisoned. In that cell, he was believed to have written his last poem, Mi Ultimo Adios. A day before his execution, he was visited by his mother and sisters when he told them of a note hidden in an alcohol stove, which was the said poem. If you read the poem, you might think of it as a declaration of love for the country. But Rizal also exposes the bitterness of death experienced by many Filipinos under the unjust rule of the Spaniards. Pray thee for all the hapless who have died, for all those who unequal torments have undergone, for our poor mothers who in bitterness have cried, for orphans, widows, and captives to tortures were shied, and pray too that you may see your own redemption. The message this poem brought transcended beyond Rizal's death and beyond the Philippines. In the 1940s, approximately 50 years since the execution of Jose Rizal, Indonesian journalist Rosihan Anwar would go on to translate the poem in Indonesian and read it over the radio in Jakarta during the Indonesian struggle for independence. It just goes to show how much meaning the poem has not just for Rizal, but for nations. On the day of his execution, December 30, 1896, Jose Rizal marched from his cell in Fort Santiago to Bagumbayan, which is now Rizal Park. He marched with both Spanish and Filipino troops. Why both, you must ask? Well, 
The firing squad was made up of Filipino troops, and the Spanish troops were there to shoot the firing squad just in case they did not shoot their fellow Filipino. In his place of death, Rizal made two requests to the Spanish captain. First, he asked not to be shot from the back. For him, being shot from the back meant treachery and turning back on your country. And Rizal believed he did not turn his back on his country and Spain. However, the Spanish captain rejected this request, saying that being shot from the back was an order given to him. Rizal hesitates, but agrees, and made his last request. He wished to be shot near the heart instead of the head, and the Spanish captain agreed. These requests were given to the executioners. At 7.03 of that fateful morning, Rizal shouted the words, Consumatum est, as he was shot by the firing squad. If we remember correctly, Rizal was not the first to say this phrase before he died. So far as records go, it was Jesus Christ who said the same phrase before he died on the cross. When translated, Consumatum est means, it is finished. And what does this mean in the context of Jesus Christ's death? And how can we relate this to Jose Rizal? During Lenten season, especially on Good Friday, we might recall praying to each of Jesus' seven last words, with the sixth being, It is finished. In Christianity, it is known that Jesus was the Son of God sent by the Father to die on the cross to pay for humanity's sins. By saying, It is finished, Jesus was making a declaration that His mission on earth is finished, and all of humanity's sins are now paid for. While we might not know Rizal's true motivation for saying consumatum est before he was executed, we can view it as simple as it is. Rizal's life and works are finished. He had already done what needed to be done in the name of his country. But it could also mean the end of reforms and the beginning of an armed revolution. Although we know that the cry of Pagadlawin is often labeled by historians as the first act of the Philippine Revolution, which happened approximately four months before the death of Jose Rizal, it cannot be denied that his death was a turning point in the revolution against the Spaniards. His death angered the Filipinos, encouraged them to take up arms and fight for independence. In the same way that Rizal said it is finished, Silence and receptiveness to colonial abuse and injustice was also finished. Rizal's death significantly influenced the course of Philippine history. It has awakened the hearts of many Filipinos to finally fight for legitimate freedom. How about you? Have you ever thought of what you would say if it was the last day on earth? Comment it down below and let us know what you think. Like, share, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell if you'd like to learn more with us. Thanks for watching!